and a knife. And they went, both of them, together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, my God, will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Verse 9 says, and they came to a place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. The concluding verse says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in, in the stead of his son. Here's the focal text for that. Verse number 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And verse number 12, And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. But now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. As you go to your seat, look at somebody and say, I was, I was guilty, guilty of attempted murder. Of attempted murder. You may be seated. Most gracious God, speak to your people. Have your way in this place with your people. God, I don't seek glory for this, but I intend to give you all of the glory. Yes. Father, encourage somebody in here today yes, to listen to your voice. Have your way, O oh God, and we will give you the glory, the honor, and our praise. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Guilty of attempted murder. This month of December, we're taking for a theme the topic breaking out. There are many things that we need to break out from. This year has brought some difficult times. But the good news is that you're still here. And the times and the things that you had to endure didn't take you out. In life, we are promised to have some ups and some downs. We're promised to have some good days and some bad days. We're promised to have some successes and some failures. But even in everything that we go through, one thing remains the same. And that is the fact that God never changes. I'm glad that even though I may go through some things, I've got somebody with me that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm glad that I serve a God that is not like me. When I am dumb, God is still smart. When I'm a sinner, God is perfect. When I am unfaithful in all areas of my life, God remains faithful. When I don't understand what's going on and how things are going to happen and change, I can testify that God stands right there in the midst of my situation and reassures me that everything is going to be okay. What we have the tendency of saying is that everything is going to be okay. But one thing I can truly say is that no matter what you may be going through, as long as you have Jesus on your side, everything is already okay. I may not have what I want or what the world says I need, 
But as long as I got Jesus, I don't need anything or anybody else. The world may turn their back on you, but God will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know about you, but I ask the question, do I have any witnesses in here that can agree with me that no matter how many people stab me in the back, God was there to heal all of my wounds. Amen. And because of that, I don't have to walk around with the knife still in my back or the hurtful words that people have tried to attach to me. But I can walk around and praise God because I don't look like what I've been through. Is there anybody up in here that can testify that if you only knew what I've been through, don't look at your neighbor for a moment and say, neighbor, this is not what I should look like. But I serve a God that believes in a makeover. I was cracked and bruised by the issues of life, but God gave me a makeover. I was hurt and ashamed of life, but God gave me a makeover. I was hurt and ashamed of life. I gotta say that again. I was hurt and ashamed of life, but God gave me a makeover. That's why I come into this place and act like I do. It's because I serve a God of a makeover. He fixed me up and gave me another chance and to open up my mouth and give him some praise. I ain't in here praising him off a second chance, but I'm praising him off the God because he's the God of chances. And he's given me another chance and he's given me another chance. And when I begin to think about how many chances he gave me, I can't even count them things no more. Because truly every morning when I open up my eyes, God has given me another chance. If you want to know how many chances that is, just go and take your age and time the time 365 and every four years going to add another day for a leap year but every now and then you got to understand that if it was not for God giving you another chance you would not be sitting up here up in here looking like you look today you would not be able to do what you can do today you would not be able to have the confidence that you have today matter of fact you wouldn't even have the anointing that you have today if it was not for the fact that God saw fit to give you do I have any witnesses up in here who can testify. I'm only here because God gave me another chance and I took that chance for my position. I don't know who I'm talking to, but when I look back over my life and I begin to think things over, I can truly say that I am blessed. I may not have a lot of money, but guess what? I'm still blessed. I may not have the best job, but I'm still blessed. I may not have the best car, but I'm still blessed. I may not have the best house, but I'm still blessed. I may not have what I started this year with, but I'm still blessed. Do I, I know I got some witnesses up in here who can testify. I may have lost some things. I may have given away some things, but I, the fact remains that as long as God is still on my side, I'm still blessed. I am blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed despite what I'm going through. I despite, I'm blessed despite what other folk try to put on me. I'm blessed despite what my situation looks like because it don't matter what it looks like because faith is what I cannot see and not what I can't see. Does there, is there anybody up in here that don't mind taking off your glasses and your contacts for a moment and beginning to look at the things that you cannot see? Yeah, I said it. Look at the things that you cannot see. That means I'm looking to Jesus. I'm looking to him when I cannot see him changing my situation. I'm looking to him when I cannot see my way coming out of this thing. I'm looking at him because of the fact that I know that if God can work it out in the past, God if he stays the same yesterday, today and forevermore, then God can work it out and don't touch your neighbor for a moment and say neighbor you better pay attention because I'm still here and because of the fact that I'm here I know that greater is coming here in this text we, we see a familiar story of Abraham and the moment where he was told to sacrifice the blessing that he prayed for I'll work that one later Abraham at his old age prayed for a son and his wife Sarah was what which was barren in her old age became pregnant and had the son that Abraham prayed for God in his infinite wisdom and authority he, he sends word to Abraham to sacrifice the very thing that he prayed for Abraham heard the voice of the Lord and rose up early in the morning to offer Isaac up to the Lord. How many of us, when told to do something for God, have a problem rising up early in the morning? I find it ironic that we have to be the work at 7 o'clock in the morning and get there on time, but we have a hard time getting to the church house for service. I find it difficult 
to see how we can get to the club or to a party on time. But when it comes time to serve God and offer up to God the sacrifices of praise and the sacrifices of worship, we show up late and wrong. What does the church need me there on time for? They never start on time anyway. Well, maybe if you get to the church early enough, we will start on time. Why does the pastor need me to be in church every time the doors are open? Well, you at work every time the doors are open and then got the nerve to pray for some overtime. Abraham understood that I must be present where the Lord needs me to be because I may miss the instructions that the Lord has for me. That's a word to somebody right there. Maybe the reason you ain't hearing from God or the reason that you ain't got the instructions that God has for you or maybe the reason you have not done what God has called you to do is because when God begins to give out instructions, you ain't nowhere to be found. Maybe the reason is when we, when we need to be present, we show up absent. And when we need to be absent, we show up present. Maybe the reason that we're going through some of the things is we're not where we need to be at the right time, but we're always where we need to be at the wrong time. Yeah, I said it just like I meant it. Sometimes you need to be somewhere, but God has not given you the ability to get there, but because you want to get there on your own, you try to break every rule and do everything that you can to get there because it's what you want. But when God tells you to move and God tells you to be somewhere at a specific time, we, we see, seem to be lackadaisical and we seem to get there when we want to, but yet God said, you may miss out on what I have for you if you're not present where I need you to be. Yeah. Notice Abraham did not ask or question God of his instructions. He just went and did what the Lord commanded him to do. Why is it that when people try to get us to do stuff, we just roll with it? But when God gives us instructions, we want to know who, what, when, where, and how. Why is it that we have to ask God questions when we don't ask people questions? Your job tells you to come in on Sunday. You don't ask your job, why did you pick Sunday out of all the days? But when God sees fit to give the pastor a service or to position you somewhere. Why is it that we have to ask a million questions when we can't just do what God has called us to do? Why is it that we want to question God but not question the world? Why is it why we question why the world has made it into the church? It's because we're too busy accepting the world and, and degrading the church. We're too busy accepting the ways of the world and pushing the church out of the church. And that's why we end up with the issues that we have. But Abraham understood that obedience is better than sacrifice. If I am not where the Lord has for me to be, then I can't expect to receive the blessings that the Lord has for me. Why is it that I'm not getting what I need? Why is it that I'm only getting enough to get by? Maybe it's because of your absence when you're supposed to be where the Lord has commanded you to be. I know it was going to get quiet up in here because some of us got a habit of doing things at the wrong time. Some of us have a habit of being absent when we should be present. But Abraham understood that I need to be everywhere where that the Lord has told me to be. Abraham, he did not question God, but he went up to Mount Moriah with Isaac to offer him as a sacrifice unto the Lord, only to raise up the knife and hear the Lord speak and say, wait a minute. Abraham was charged with attempted murder because he was getting ready to murder Isaac. He was about to kill Isaac, but the Lord spoke. I only got one point for you today. I promise you. I'm going to give you that one point and we're going to get out of here. But if you're really going to break out of bondage in 2013 and live freely in 2014, I need you to do me a favor. Just look at the person sitting next to you and say, neighbor, neighbor. you've got to pay attention. You've got to pay attention. Here it is. Abraham, when told to sacrifice the blessing that he desired, he acted on the voice of the Lord. No matter what his will was, he desired to do the will of the Lord more, and the Lord provided. When was the last time that you really listened to the voice of God? I don't mean go to him in prayer and then not wait for him to answer, but I mean wait on the Lord to answer you and then do what he says. If Abraham had not have listened to the Lord, then he would have killed his blessing. That's a word for somebody up in here. Maybe the reason you're going through some of the things is because the very things that God sent to you and the words that God came your way, instead of listening and taking heed to them, you killed your blessing. Can I be real for a moment? I'm going to be real anyway. Here it is. The reason why some of us up in this church right here are going through in ministry 
And in life, it's because you don't know how to distinguish the difference between Pastor and Mario. Yeah, let me work that for a moment. The Lord spoke to me the other day, and some of the struggles that the people are going through is because some of them, whether they want to admit it or not, is due to the inability to listen to me because of the fact that they can't get past my age, or they can't get past the fact that we may be family, or the fact that can't nobody tell them nothing. But I come by to encourage somebody and warn somebody today that in order to get your blessing that's attached to your burden, you got to learn how to pay attention. Now, the life that you live is not about you, but about serving the God that created you. Abraham was receptive to the voice of the Lord and saw that God provided for him. Sometimes we miss out on the provision because we're too busy not listening to the voice of God, but constantly listening to the people that we are connected to. Abraham, when getting the first word from the Lord that said sacrifice Isaac, he did not publicly announce it to everyone, but he went up and did what the Lord had instructed him to do. Abraham went and took Isaac up to Mount Moriah. He didn't take anybody else with him after hearing the voice of the Lord. He did not look for validation or confirmation from nobody else. Uh, stop seeking people's ideas and people's confirmation. All you need is the word of the Lord. Uh, I thank you for your opinion, but guess what? It ain't really needed. Uh, Cause Can't nobody give me direction but the Lord God Almighty. Could it be that God can't get your attention due to the fact that everybody else has your attention? Could it be that Abraham understood that all I need is the word of the Lord and the people that's connected to my blessing. Can I preach that to married folk for a moment? If somebody else is spending more time with your spouse than you, you might need to listen to God. If you're listening, if somebody's speaking, uh, if you're speaking somebody else's name more than you're speaking your spouse's name, you might need to listen to God. Singles, I ain't gonna leave y'all either. If you're spending more time looking for a boo than you spend looking for God, then you might want to listen to the voice of God. People can become distractions and when they get into your personal space, guess what? Here it is. I'm about to mess some of y'all up. When people get into your personal space, they don't invade your space, but they invade the privacy of God in your life. The problem with many of us is we begin to let any and everybody into our life. How can you expect God to move on your behalf when you didn't push God out of your life to put everybody else in your life? Maybe that's the reason why some of us are going through what we're going through now. It's because we've made no space for God, but made space for everybody else. I know I won't get too many amens because many of us don't want to let people go. Many of us don't know how to move on to the next level. Many of us don't know that God opened up a door for you, but you're still busy trying to walk through a door that's still shut. Why is it that we will refuse to open and walk through a door that God has made a way for, but we still want to walk through a closed door? I made the analogy on Friday night up in here. Why, if there was a pool outside, why would you keep walking outside, falling in the pool through that front door if God has created a back door? Why would you keep going in the same mess over and over again instead of listening to the voice of God and taking the way of escape that God has given you? I knew I won't get too many amens with this sermon today, but that's fine because I'm preaching to deliver somebody and deliverance will come with no whether you want it or not. Deliverance will come where the spirit of the Lord is. Minister Regina said it on Friday night where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And that's why some of us sit up in here bound as I don't know what because you don't want to let you don't want to let God have his way. You don't want to let God take control of your life. You don't want to let God be God in your life. But you want to be God and you want God to be you. But I just decree, declare, and command somebody up in here today to have a role reversal for a moment. Allow God to be who God is and allow you to be who you are. You can't tell the creator what to do, but the creator has to tell you what to do. That's the problem with some of us up in here today. We want to be the pastor so bad, we don't know what to do. I ain't just talking about it in church, but we want a pastor at home. We want a pastor at our jobs. We want to be in control all the time. But if God did not position you today, then you need to sit down and shut up somewhere. Yeah, I said it just like I meant it to. Because every now and then, an open mouth always gets you in trouble. But Abraham understood that when I heard the voice of the Lord, I kept my mouth shut and I went up to Mount Moriah and did what the Lord had commanded me to do. Stop always running your mouth and expecting God to move on your behalf. Learn how to keep some things to yourself. Why is it, church, that we have an easy, a easy ability to keep secrets that we should release and confess to the Lord about secrets, but everything that we should keep to ourselves, we black.
laugh and make it known to everybody. Why is it that you're talking at the wrong time instead of talking when God tells you to open up your mouth? Uh, that's why the devil is riding your coattail. It ain't because God let him peek into your future. It's because you learn how to open your mouth to the wrong person and then they let the enemy come into your life. Everybody ain't praying for your deliverance. Uh, everybody ain't praying for your breakthrough. Everybody that speak a word into your life don't have your best interest at heart. But some folks are used by the enemy to come in and attack your life. I don't know who that one was for, but you better learn how to keep your mouth shut sometimes. You better learn how to stop inviting everybody up in your business. You better learn how to every now and then to go into your secret place and just tell all your problems to Jesus. He's the only one that can deliver you. He's the only one that can change you. He's the only one that can give you a man. Is there anybody up in here that's made up in their mind that I'm going to pay attention to the Lord God Almighty? I'm not going to let anything come between me and my worship. I'm not going to let anything come between me and my God. I need a worship experience. And I can't allow family, friends, work, associates, flings, or myself to hinder my breakthrough and my blessing. Now, stop hearing from other people and learn how to listen to God. That's why I make sure that when I'm in the sanctuary when I'm supposed to be, I make sure that I am where I need to be. I make sure that I'm there when God opens up the door of the church because I want to make sure that when God begins to speak, I am there to listen. I want to make sure that when God starts raining down his blessings, I'm there to receive. I want to make sure that when God begins to deliver, so I'm there in the line to get my deliverance. I want to make sure, I know you don't, you're not used to coming to church every day of the week. I know you ain't used to coming to church more than one day for one hour, but I come to let you know 2014 is going to be a whole new year because I refuse to go in in bondage. I refuse to go in bound. I refuse to go in like I've been in this year. And therefore, if I got to be in church seven days a week, if I got to get somebody to open up that door for me just for me to come in and lay at the altar, I don't mean no harm. Don't get mad at me. Just get down here and open up the door because I'm coming in with a praise. I'm coming in with a worship and I'm coming in to hear from God. Is there anybody in here that ready to hear from God? Is there anybody up in here that's ready to get what the Lord has for you? Abraham was charged with attempted murder, but guess what? God provided a ram in the bush, and Abraham was acquitted of all his charges. Aren't you glad that some of the things that you've been charged with, God acquitted you from them? Aren't you glad that when you didn't do what you were supposed to do, and God had reason to take you up out of here? Aren't you glad that when the enemy showed up, and you began to follow, and do what the enemy told you to do, and you began to do things contrary to the word of God. God didn't take you up out of here, but he gave you another chance. And I know when I look around this room, we're all working on more than a one chance and a second chance. When I look around this room, we're more than third and fourth chances. When I look around the room, we're more than double digit chances. Because truly be told, we sin every day. But thanks be unto God that God gives us another chance. And I don't know about you, but that's my shout moment. Because when I realize that I shouldn't be with as much freedom as I have now. I thank God that he is the only righteous judge and he's the only one that's got the power to judge me and sentence me. You can try to put me in bondage all you want, but I'm glad that I serve a God that has the final say so. You worried about everybody else and what they gonna think when you make a decision, but God has the final say so. You worried about leaving when you should leave, but God has the final say so. You staying around just to make people happy, but God has the final say so. Go and look at your neighbor one last time and say, neighbor, you better pay attention because the enemy is coming to seek who he can devour. The enemy is coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. The enemy is coming to torment your life, but know that he can't come on his own. He got to come by the bleeding of the Holy Spirit because he can't do nothing that God don't allow him to do. So the question is, will you pay attention to the voice of the Lord or the voice of the enemy? Will you pay attention to the things that you shouldn't pay attention to? Or will you learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but I made up in my mind this week. I ain't got time for no mess no more. And if I'm connected to some mess before this year ends, I'm going to disconnect myself from some mess. Some things that people ain't going to understand why I'm disconnecting myself from them. It's because I see the mess that's in your life. I don't mean I ain't judging you. You may have some mess and I got some mess too. But ain't no need for us to be messy together. But I got to learn how to disassociate myself from some things. Because what we what we worked in the past may not work now. The only thing that works now that worked in the past is Jesus. He's the only thing that can make a way out of nowhere. He's the only thing that can deliver you from your infirmities. He's the only one that
that can change your life around. And is there anybody up in here that's had a change in their life? I know you might have had one in 1992, but baby, it's 2013, and God says you need another chance. You need another makeover. I know we did that makeover thing back in June and July. Well, we had that Wednesday night where I preached that God can give you a makeover. But I come to let somebody know that every now and then you ain't got to wait on God to tell you you need a makeover. But some of us need to just make an appointment and go to God anyway. We need to go to God and tell God, God, I need a makeover. I'm tired of living how I'm living. I'm tired of going through the same thing all over again. But God, I need a makeover. Put me on the potter's wheel, oh God. Mow me and make me. If you see anything in me that is not pleasing to your sight, God, God smack me dead. That's the problem right there. We don't want to be smacked down. We don't want to go down in order to come up. But you gotta realize you can't go up without going down first. You got to start somewhere. And in order for God to raise you up, you got to stop lower than you are right now. Or lower where you want to go. And that's the problem with some of us. We don't want to submit. And when you go down, that's the position of submission. Meaning, God, God, I can't do this by myself. God, I got to humble myself. That's why the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their sin. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody need to humble yourself and pray. Somebody need to go to God in prayer. God, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help shall I know. If thou wilt draw thyself from me, where well, I know where I'm going. God, I know that I can't make it without you. I'll bust hell wide open if I don't have you, God. But because of the fact that, God, you made me, and because of the fact that you created me, I know that I can't change myself because I don't have ownership rights. But, God, because you are still alive, I know that I can go to you in my secret closet. I can go to you in my secret prayer time. I don't need a prayer line at church to usher me into the spirit. But, God, I can show up in the midnight hour when it's just you and me alone, God. And I can come to you just as I am. And I can leave different than I came. Does anybody have a testimony that when I came to God, God changed me? When I came to God, God made a way for me. When I came to God, God released me from the infirmities that was holding me bound. I thank God for freedom from people. Because people used to try to run my life. But I thank God that God gave me a mouth now. And I can tell folk I don't serve you, but I serve the Lord God Almighty. I don't mean no harm, but this might be my issue. I don't like nobody trying to tell me what to do but God. Because if your word don't align with his will, then I'm just wasting time listening to you. And if I don't do what God called me to do, and I do what the world wants me to do, I'll find myself lost in the sauce. But thanks be unto God that God said, it said, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. I'm glad I don't need to be conformed to the United States of America, but I can be conformed to the word of God, the word that told me that God created me in his image, the world that told me I might, the world told me I might look like my mama, but I'm glad that I look like God more. The world might tell me I look like my daddy, but I'm glad I do look like my daddy, the one that made me, not the sperm that met the egg, but the God that made me, the one that called me into existence. I'm glad today that I don't need to depend on nobody that ain't got the calling and the gift. God told me this. This is my testimony. God told me, why are you spending time trying to evaluate your calling? Why are you spending time trying to explain your calling? God told me this morning on my way here. He said, stop trying to explain stuff to people who ain't got the call on their life. Because they'll never understand. You're going to walk a different type of walk. You're going to talk a different type of talk. You're going to live a different kind of life. And I come to speak that into somebody. Yeah. Why are you trying to live like everybody else wants you to live? God said they ain't got the call that you got. God said they ain't got the position that you got. God said they ain't got the power that you got. And in order to understand that God can do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all you can ever ask or think. You got to learn how to be connected to God. And if you ain't connected to God, maybe you need to stop what you're doing and go back and find out where your disconnection came from. Maybe somebody came in your life that you thought was a blessing, but they turned out to be a burden. Maybe
maybe that's where your disconnection came from. Maybe that job that you got on, it maybe it seemed like it was a blessing from God, but it became a burden because you start missing church, and now you don't feel like you got your help anymore. But I'm glad today that God told me to tell somebody up in here today that all you got to do is get your connection back. Spend time with the Lord God Almighty. Stop always running to your job. Stop always running to people. But learn every now and then to take a vacation and get into your word and spend time with God and watch God turn your situation around. The reason why some of us are going through over and over and over again is because we've not yet got a connection with God. You ain't seen no blessings in six months and you might want to check your connection. I put my laptop in the iron into the same plug this morning and it flipped the breaker and the power became out. Maybe you got too many things plugged in and you only need to be plugged into the right source. Maybe the reason is everybody else trying to plug into you while you trying to plug into the source. But I can't save you baby. You got to have a God on your side to save you. I can't get you into heaven but you got to have a relationship with the God Almighty. I can't preach to you and you not do your job too. I can preach to you all I want 52 Sundays out of year. But guess what? If you don't have a mindset to be changed, you'll never change. I can tell you what the word says. I can quote Genesis to Revelation. But if you don't have a will to change, then God will never do anything in your life. He won't move unless you want him to move. Do, it, do I have anybody up in here that say, I'm ready to move. I'm ready to go beyond where I am. I'm ready to do some new things. I'm ready to see the blessings that the Lord has for me. I'm ready to see God move like never before. I've had a dry moment for too long and I need God to come through with some rain. I need the overflow to come into my life. I'm tired of being down. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of struggling. But I need God to show up and work a miracle. Come into me. The Bible said on Friday night, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. You can't expect God to give you rest if you ain't doing no labor. You can't expect God to move on your behalf if you ain't doing nothing for God. That's why I'm so particular that every service that we have, if I got to be here, I want to see you too. Because when I get blessed, notice what the Bible says. It says that the old rain down the beard, even Aaron's beard. So that means that the oil and the blessing got to run from the head down. It don't run from the feet up. And the Bible has already confirmed that I was the head of this building. And I know that my blessings are on the way. So know when he blessed me, he got to bless some folk that's up in here too. So that's why when I show up, I look for y'all because I don't want y'all to miss your blessing. Is there anybody up in here that needs a blessing? Is there anybody that needs a breakthrough? Is there anybody that needs some deliverance? I don't know about you, but go and high five your neighbor one time and say, neighbor, I'm coming to get mine. I ain't missing my blessing. I ain't missing my breakthrough. I ain't missing my deliverance no more. I've been where I am too long, but I need God to show up. I need God to move. I need the Lord to do something for me. I've been praying all night long. I can't sleep through the night no more. I've been boggling all my mind. I've been going through hell and high water, but I need God to start to move on my behalf. And I come by to let somebody know that God said he's getting ready to move, but you gotta be present when he moves. You gotta be here when he moves. Whatever God is, you might want to make sure you are. And anywhere that you are that God ain't, you need to go ahead and excuse yourself. So I don't care where you at this week, but go ahead and say, excuse me, but I gotta get up out of here because I gotta get to where God is. If I gotta go to my car in order to get God, I'm going to sit up in my car. If I gotta go in the bathroom to get God, I'm going up in the bathroom. If I gotta take a hot shower in order to get God and hear from God, then I'm going to get in the shower. If I gotta make it down to the church house to see God, then I'm calling somebody with a key and telling them to open up the door. I need God every day. I need God every hour. I don't mean no harm to y'all, but to me, Sunday and Wednesday and second Friday ain't enough. But I need God every day in my life. I need God every moment of my life. I don't care about Negroes who try to tell me it don't take all that. You write about that. It don't take all that I'm giving, but it takes more than what I'm giving because God gave all for me when he sent Jesus to the cross at Calvary. Notice what I told you a few months ago. A Bible study. I told you that when Abraham 
Abraham took Isaac up to Mount Moriah. It was the same place that David buried Goliath's head at Golgotha's hill, which is the same place where Jesus went to the cross at Calvary. So when you're there where God has told you to be, and when you start hearing the voice of the Lord, know that it's your moment of victory. And when you get to your moment of victory, and a devil in hell that can take what God has given you away from you. Is there anybody up in here that's tired of the devil messing with your stuff? I come out and let you know he won't mess with your stuff if you have your stuff in the right place at the right time. Notice what the text said. It never said that the devil was present on Mount Moriah, but it said that God provided on Mount Moriah. And the devil can't mess with nowhere that God is getting ready to provide for you. So when you get to your place where the Lord will provide, you got a reassurance to know that God is there with you and the enemy can't even step foot on territory. And that's why even in Job's life, the enemy was present at the beginning. But in chapter number 42, verse number 12, the enemy was no longer present when the Lord began to give Job double for his trouble. I don't know about some of y'all, but the hell I've been through this year, I ain't getting double for my trouble, but I'm getting quadruple for my trouble. Because I need God to give me an extraordinary blessing. I heard it said like this, I need some accelerated favor. Many favor that should not get to me to 2015. I need God to give it to me now. I need God to show up sooner than I've ever expected him to be. The sermon was finished a long time ago, but I'm trying to testify to somebody and encourage you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Isaac lay there on the burnt offering, knowing that his father had a knife in the air. He was getting ready to stab and kill his son, but God provided. Abraham never had Isaac to question him about why he was getting ready to kill him. But every now and then will you be the sacrifice that God needs you to be. Isaac understood that if my father has called me into the sacrifice then I know that there's a reason for me being the sacrifice. How many of us have been called by God to sacrifice but we don't want to be the sacrifice. We don't want to let go of some things that God told us to let go of. We don't want to kill some things because it may hurt somebody's feelings. What's worse? You getting your feelings hurt or you living a life that's not pleasing to God? What's worse? You walking over somebody to make them feel good or you making God happy? What's worse? You living your life and pleasing people or you living your life and pleasing God? I don't know about you but I made up in my mind this 2013 month of December that I'm getting free from everything that has ever had me in bondage. You don't like me in 2013? That's fine. You ain't gonna like me in 2014. You don't like me right now? That's fine. You ain't gonna like me tomorrow either. You don't like me on Monday? Guess what? You ain't seen nothing yet because Tuesday's a brand new day. You don't like me on Tuesday? Just wait till I get up in here on the last Bible study of 2013 and show what God has done for me and what God has made a way out of no way for me. Just wait till you see what God's getting ready to do. I don't even know what he's going to do now, but I'm testifying and prophesying over myself that greater is getting ready to come. And if you know what you got, if you know that you got a God up inside of you that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly, you wouldn't be sitting on your tail right now, but you would think about what God's getting ready to bless you with and you go ahead and give God a praise in advance. I'm praising him because I know that greater is getting ready to come to me. I'm praising him because the devil can't stop me. I'm praising him because everything that has hit me in bondage in 2013, I'm getting ready to break out of that mess. I don't know about y'all, but I made up in my mind that I'm coming out of this thing because I'm paying attention to God and not my neighbor. Never, ever ignore the voice of God for somebody else. My phone didn't rung all weekend. I ain't answered not one time. Why? Because I needed to hear from God. People get mad. Leave me voice messages. I didn't call you. I know you called me. I've seen it. But right now I'm spending time with God. Just wait till this week. This is my week of prayer. I don't care if folk can't get in contact with me. I don't care. Because this week is my week that I'm coming out of some stuff. Amen. And folk ain't going to like me when I come out. Because they like seeing me in bondage. Yes. Yes. Or because God ain't brought them out yet. Come on. Come on. Beware of those who are miserable. Yes. Because yes. misery loves yes. company. Yes. I started to get miserable last week. Jesus. I started to get depressed last week. Uh -huh. I started to go through the motions last week. Come on. 
until somebody hollered out Jesus. Jesus. And they didn't say nothing else but Jesus. And it made me think, wow, I do got Jesus. Yes. So why am I depressed? Mm -hmm. Why am I trying to force myself to be depressed? Come on. Mm -hmm. Because everybody around me depressed. Jesus. Maybe it ain't that I should join, but maybe I should leave. Mm. Because everybody in your, you know the old saying, if you're the smartest one in your circle, you might need another circle. Uh -huh. Guess what? If you're the only non-depressed person in your circle full of depressed people, you might want to find another circle. If you're the only one in your circle that ain't broke and everybody else in your circle is broke, you might want to find another circle. Come on. I'm talking about broke financially, but if you find a circle of people who have been broken spiritually, you got the right circle. Uh -huh. Because when God breaks you, he can put you back together better than you were when he broke you. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Yeah. But you got to want to be broken. Hallelujah. Preacher told me last night at 9.30, I was on Mercury Boulevard going to Sonic. Lady Amber and I, we, we said we needed some dessert. And we were going to Sonic, and the preacher said, one of the preachers that was there at the prayer breakfast yesterday, he called me and said, every time I hear you, you go higher. But I know at this season of your life, you're being crushed. He said, the only way the oil can flow is you've got to be crushed. You've got to be crushed in order for the anointing to flow. Yes. Problem why some of us don't have the anointing is we run from the crushing. Oh my God. And if you're being crushed, know that there's anointing that's going to follow. Yes. That's why we go through spiritually. Because God's getting ready to deliver unto us Thank you, Jesus. a gift like never before. I question why I'm going through in December. I've been through all year, but December's been a rough month. I said, God, what am I going through? He said, because notice, this is the time that y'all celebrate the birth of Jesus. The day that I gave the world a gift that changed the course of history. So why not I give you a gift of the anointing? from the gift that I already gave you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I talked at the prayer breakfast about the date that we celebrate Jesus' birthday. Mm -hmm. Of course he ain't born. He wasn't born December 25th. Mm -hmm. Two reasons why it's in Luke chapter 2. You'll find it if you read it. Mm -hmm. Verses 1 through 4 and verses 7 and 8. But here's the kicker. We can debate all day long when he was born, and it still has no relevance. Exactly. The only right. thing that matters is that he was born. Amen. Yeah. And he was born for you. So as we go into our prayer mode, we're going to pray that God would do something in your life. Matter of fact, we're not praying that. As the Lord, just tell me something. You're always praying that I do something in your life. Why don't you pray that you do something in mine? Amen. So we're going to pray that we would be better servants for God. Yes, yes. yes. Because when you begin to decrease in yourself yes. oh, glory to God. and make room for God to increase, yes. then everything else that you've been praying for can happen. Yes. Uh -huh. But until you get to that point, you really don't have a position to expect God to do anything. That's a moocher. Somebody who always wants something but ain't giving nothing. What are you giving to God? Think about that. God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. God, we pray now that when we were guilty of attempted murder, murdering the blessings and the words that you gave us, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us, O oh God, so that we can be relieved of some things. So that we can serve you greater. God, we come confessing our faults to you. This is a prayer, O oh God, of repentance. Father, forgive us for not being present when we should. 
Forgive us, God, for not listening to your word when we should. Forgive us, God, for departing from you to enjoy the world instead of departing from the world to enjoy you. Forgive us, God, for not doing what we should when you told us what we should do. God, we pray now that you would give us a new walk as we depart this year. Don't give it to us in 2014, God, but give it to us now so that we can walk into 2014 the way that we should. God, we don't expect to break out December 31st at 1159, but God, we need a breakout before so that we can walk worthy in the anointing that you've given unto us. Do a new thing, O oh God, so that we can live and do what you've called us to do. Father, we need a change so that we can be who you created us to be. Let us not judge others, O oh God, but let us be the judger of our own self so that we can see our own flaws, O oh God. Let us not focus on the flaws of others, O oh God, but let us focus on our own self. Because if we spend time getting our own self together, we wouldn't have time to focus on nobody else. God, we thank you for the fact that you've given us the word today, oh God, to let us know that if we don't pay attention to your voice, oh God, then we'll miss out on what you have for us. So God, we speak now in this place that we're going to be changed. We're going to be delivered. We're going to be set free, oh God. And we're going to be the servant and the disciples that you have called us to be. God, we don't want to repeat next year of what we've experienced this year. I'm not talking about the finances. I'm not talking about the health, God. But I'm talking about our walk with you, oh God. Give us a greater walk. Give us the desires, oh God, to seek after you more, oh God. Give us the desires, oh God, to love you like you loved us, God. Give us the desire to have that agape love, oh God, that is unconditional, oh God. God, even if you don't give me what I want, God, God, I still love you. Even if you don't deliver me, God, I still love you. Even if you don't make a way, God, I still love you. Because you first loved us. We pray that prayer, oh God, believing in faith yes. and expectation. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.